What happens if we have a broken neutral? This Learn the Electrics video came about because of several posts about this on social media about testing electrical circuits that have a fault. In this case, we can look at a situation that I had a while back in a domestic property with a radial socket circuit. There are always many questions on broken neutrals. What effect will they have on the circuit? How can we spot a broken neutral? And why are there different voltages around the circuit? On a lighting circuit, I had a message that when the lights are turned on, they don't come on. But when the customer tried to fix it himself, he got a shock off the neutral. Why? And many more. We'll start off with a standard radial socket circuit with five outlets. In this video, we're looking at actual voltages that may be measured on site. So we'll talk about 240 volts and not 230 volts as we would if we were discussing the wiring regs and exams. And we'll keep the explanations and reasons very simple so that everybody understands. And always remember to work safely, especially if carrying out live testing. What voltages should we expect from a healthy circuit? The voltage shown here is typical in the UK, 238.7 volts, which we will call 240 volts. Carry out your basic test at each socket using a plug top test adapter. For a good circuit, line to neutral and line to earth will give us 240 volts, and neutral to earth will return 0 volts, give or take a small amount. And with a good circuit, a lamp or any other appliance in any socket will work. We don't normally think about sockets working, we just know that if we plug the kettle in, we can make ourselves a cup of coffee, or the TV will come on, etc. What did we have on site? The customer had phoned and said that some sockets worked and some didn't. Have you done anything recently that may have stopped the sockets working? I asked. Not that I can think of, was the confident reply. An easy way to establish which sockets are working and which are not is to use a plug top LED tester or simply use a table lamp and plug it into each socket outlet in turn. Of the five outlets, three worked and two didn't. Voltage checks showed odd readings. A line to neutral test gave us 240 volts on the good sockets and a variable voltage on the faulty sockets. Shown here as 10 volts this is an induced voltage that is picked up by the test leads, although there is no current associated with it. Using a lamp as a test load, we could check the line to neutral voltages. Sockets A, B and C were all OK, giving us 239 volts. However, sockets D and D gave us 0 volts between the line and neutral when the lamp was plugged in. And here was an important clue. How can we test the voltage at a socket without dismantling things? If it's a double socket, plug the lamp into one outlet and the test adapter into the other. Both outlets are the same point electrically. Make sure that both switches are on and your meter will display a result for you. If it's a single socket, use a short extension lead with two or more outlets to give you the extra outlet that you need. Without a lamp or any other appliance in the socket, we should get readings something like this. Sockets A, B and C are obviously healthy, not so for D and E. With a lamp in the suspect socket outlets, which are D and D, we will get results like those shown. Notice the zero volts between line and neutral, and the 240 volts between neutral and earth. Very odd. The problem was in fact a broken neutral connection between sockets C and D. In this case, the problem was a junction box installed below the floorboards, which is not good practice. The plumber had laid new pipes under the floorboards a week earlier and had caught the neutral conductor with a pipe. The question is, why did they give the readings that they did? Why would a break in the neutral make the line to neutral 0 volts and the neutral to earth 240 volts? This is the opposite to what we would expect. The first three sockets work. There's a 240 volt path from the line conductor to the lamp and a zero volt path back along the neutral conductor. 240 volts exist between the line and neutral at each outlet 
and so the lamp lights up. The last two sockets do not work. There's a continuous path from the consumer unit along the line conductor to the socket, but there's no path back to the consumer unit for the neutral conductor. There's no reference point for the broken neutral. The neutral at the last two sockets is what we call floating. It is not connected to anything and will pick up induced voltages. Anything between 1 volt and 10 or 12 volts. There's no current in it, it just looks worrying at first. What happens when we plug in a lamp or some other appliance? We connect the broken neutral conductor to the line through the lamp as shown here by the red arrow. It is no longer floating because it now has a reference through the lamp and the line conductor and will assume the same voltage as the line. If line and the broken neutral are both at 240 volts, then the difference between them is 0 volts, and your meter will display 0 volts. With the lamp plugged into a faulty socket, the lamp wiring and the bulb provide a continuity path from the line conductor down to the broken neutral, so it's no longer floating. The line passes 240 volts through the lamp and onto the broken neutral. The broken neutral becomes 240 volts. At the socket outlet, if the line is 240 volts and the neutral is also 240 volts, the difference between them is 0 volts. Your meter will show 0 volts and the lamp will still not work. The neutral on the good side though will still be at 0 volts. Let's use another example to make this clearer, a lighting circuit this time. Shown here is a very basic lighting circuit, a switch, a bulb and two pieces of wire. With the switch closed, 240 volts is fed to the lamp along the low resistance line conductor. At the other side of the lamp is the low resistance neutral conductor, connected to 0 volts. The high resistance lamp will have most of the voltage across it, and this is Ohm's law. If we open the switch, current stops flowing and the 240 volts stops at the switch. Because the other side of the switch is connected to neutral through the lamp, it assumes the same voltage as neutral, in other words, 0 volts. A break in the neutral will have the same effect as an open switch. 240 volts can travel along the line, through the closed light switch, through the lamp, where it stops at the broken wire. All the wires and the lamp become 240 volts. The other side of the brake, however, is still connected to neutral and remains at zero volts. This is why touching the neutral conductor on the wrong side of a brake will result in an electric shock. One side is at zero volts, but the other is at 240 volts. A brake in the neutral conductor can show itself as different problems, depending on where it's broken and what else is in the circuit at the time. Every appliance relies on the integrity of the line conductor to carry the current to the piece of equipment and also on the continuity of the neutral to allow the current to return. Break the flow along this path and the devices will stop operating correctly. If the electricity cannot complete the route from the consumer unit to the appliance and then back to the consumer unit, things will just not happen. Understanding why different voltages can be shown on your test meter and what they mean is an important part of fault finding and an important addition to your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics all one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.